Hi, everybody. I am Rafael Mora. I am from Lima, Peru. I study philosophy and work as a professor at the Federico Villarreal National University. I was the winner of the Francisco Miro Quesada Award. This award is named in honor of the Peruvian intellectual uh, who is best known for introducing logic as subject in Peru. Uh, in Peru, not many people cultivate logic. There are some uh, surprise and theses, but there seems to be no coordination or leadership in this regard. The title of my work, of my paper, was A Pragmatic Dissolution of Carrie's Paradox. In that paper, I deal with Carrie's Paradox. Specifically, I use non-formal logic tools to interpret it as a statement that seeks to emphasize the truth of certain information. The subject is interesting because it allows establishing bridges of communication between formal logic and non-formal logic. In principle, Carrie's paradox arises when someone asserts that if what he is saying is true, then it will be so. The problem with this sentence is that it raises the possibility that anything can be proved. I tried to deal with the paradox with three types of logic, the paracomplete logic, the paraconsistent logic, and the relevant logic. But none were effective. At that time, uh, I noticed an area that I had not explored, non-formal logic, and especially pragmatics. From that framework, and based on the work of Grice about logic and conversation, I state the idea that Carrie's paradox is just a phrase that can be used to emphasize certain information. I recommended uh, these books, to read this book, uh, The Great Book of Paradox um, of Michael Clark, uh, and this article of Haskell Curry, the inconsistency of certain formal logic, and this another article of Paul Grice, Logic and Conversation. Well, uh, I wrote three theses about paradoxes. Uh, my bachelor thesis, you can find in internet. Uh, this work is about Epimenides paradox. My master dissertation is about the Russell paradox. And finally, my doctoral dissertation is about Carrie's paradox. Okay? Well, um, I share my screen for all of you. You can see my PowerPoint, a pragmatic dissolution of Carrie's paradox. Um, the Carrie's paradox is related with another paradoxes like Liar's paradox or Russell's paradox. But the difference is that Carrie's paradox 
not contain negations and not contain contradiction. This is a very interesting properties of this paradox. And then uh, to resolve Carrie's paradox is more difficult than resolve the liar's paradox and Russell's paradox. Um, an expression of Curry is a conditional. In that conditional, uh, this, uh, his antecedent, the antecedent refers to all conditional and attributes true, predicates true about all conditional. And uh, the consequent contains information. For example, this is an expression that generators generate the Carrier's paradox. If this conditional is true, then uh, this year will be the end of the world. For example, if you apply uh, logical techniques, uh, formal logical techniques, uh, you can prove that uh, this year will be the end of the world. You can prove that or anything information includes a contradiction information or false or false information. This is the, the problematic situation. Um, because if you can prove anything by using a conditional structure, an special conditional structure, uh, this is a, a not good. This is a the not good situation because uh, logic uh, would be trivial. Uh, and uh, this is a, a, a bad, a bad idea, okay? Uh, for this reason, it's important to resolve the Carrey's paradox. Resolve, but this paradox is very difficult. Um, this, this paradox is similar to Liar's paradox uh, because um, this paradox, the Carrey's paradox, uh, refers to itself uh, and predicates uh, to itself truth. The difference is that liar's paradox refers to itself and predicates or of itself false. This is the difference. Um, this paradox, Carrie's paradox, has a, a mathematical version or a version with sets, a version that use sets like Russell paradox. This is the uh, another similarity. Well, um, I repeat, um, it's very amazing um, that this paradox uh, can prove all, can prove all information, um, but at the same time, not contain negation and not contain contradiction. This is a um, very peculiarity. And for me, um, this is a, a, a very important challenge. Uh, I try to resolve this paradox by using uh, 
non-classical logic. Uh, first, I use the para complete logic design by Hartree Field. Uh, the idea is that Carrie's paradox uh, is not true and is not false. Carrie's paradox has a third uh, truth value, a third truth value, uh, indefinite, uncertain, insecure, or, or unknown. unknown. This is the proposal of Hartree Field. The another proposal uh, is the uh, for a consistent logic of Graham Priest. Um, Graham Priest uh, construct a, a new definition of conditional by using uh, non-normal words and the concept of non-normal words is a very difficult concept uh, but with this strategy uh, Graham Priest stop the Carris paradox and um, it's a very attractive proposal but it's more complicated this idea um, the bad idea, the bad notice, um, the bad situation is that uh, para complete logic and para consistent logic not resolve the Carris paradox definitely, definitely. That to say, uh, not all para consistent logic and not all para complete logic resolves this paradox. Um, for me was uh, uh, unfortunately a uh, situation, unfortunately information. Well, um, then I try to resolve this paradox by using the relevance logic of Noel Belknap and Alan Ross Anderson. I think, I think that Carrie's paradox was an irrelevant inference. But using the ideas of these thinkers, of these research, researchers, um, it's easy to note that Carrie's paradox is not irrelevant inference. It's not irrelevant. It's relevant according to the criteria of the relevant logic. It's a uh, uh, relevant inference. Why? Because it's possible to using the premise or the premises, using the premises to derivate, to deduce the conclusion. This is possible. This is a first criteria of relevant. And also uh, the premises and conclusion share a variable, one variable, share. This is the second condition of relevance. For me, it, that uh, was a, a, a bad sign, a bad sign, okay? Um, I think this paradox by months and one day 
I want to change my framework. I remember that there are another framework, the non-logical framework, and specifically the pragmatics. And for me, was very important. Use these tools and applicate in this case. The idea of use non-formal logic uh, was very important to conclude my thesis because um, I understand that the logic is not only formal. Um, the logic uh, is possible to divide the logic into parts, formal and non-formal. But for me, the logic is one. Uh, this uh, classification of logic is only a, a didactical classification, but is not real classification. This is my, uh, my proposal. Uh, well, um, I read, I uh, research about the pragmatic perspective. I know the works of Paul Grice and applicate his tools to my problem. In a non-formal version, Carrie's paradox, uh, that is, Carrie's paradox is the next phrase. If I am right, then, for example, the book is on the table. This is the uh, non-formal version of Carrie's paradox. Okay, the, the idea is to discover what is the mean. And if you read the work about logic and conversation, um, of Grice, uh, you can use, for example, your maxims, in especial the maxim of quantity, for example. Uh, it's possible also to use another tool, the conversational implicature. And in this case, um, I use this tool to the Carrie's paradox. And I think uh, when people says, if I am right, then the book is on the table, um, what does mean? What does mean of this phrase in a human situation? And I discover that uh, the real mean, the true, uh, the true mean of the uh, true interpretation of this paradox, if uh, is that is a, a way is a way to emphasize information. When I say, if I am right, then this year was or will be the end of the world, the unique information that I say is this year will be the end of the world. This is the unique information, but I use the conditional structure of Carrie's paradox. Why? 
for emphasize information in consequent. For emphasize the information contains in consequent of this condition. This is my contribution to this discussion. Okay? Uh, in, in few words, in another words, that um, conditional of carry reduce to only a consequent. Um, in another words, um, the grammatical form in Carrie's paradox is not the same that the logical form. This is the idea. But, but it, it, um, this situation is not unique. You can remember another expressions. If, for example, I think, therefore I am, the Descartes expression. Uh, it, this phrase is not conditional. It's not conditional. Um, two, if two equals nine, then I am the genie of the lamp. Uh, this phrase, the, the real uh, meaning of this phrase is that it's not true that two equals nine. This is the interpretation, the correct interpretation. It's not conditional. And the same situation occurs with Carrie's paradox. This expression, Carrie's paradox, simple implies conversationally that the book is on the table. So the paradox arises only from a formal approach. The benefit of this view is that it is coherent with the idea that at bottom, Carrie's paradox is much like the Banach Tarski paradox. That is a, a counterintuitive but substantiated result. You do not have to solve something that is not a problem at all. Logic may be designed to avoid Carl's paradox, but if the maneuver designed to avoid this paradox is more complex than the paradox itself, the strategy solves the supposed problem, but commit us to another one, and excessively and unnecessarily technical logic. Even if interesting in academic terms, from the pragmatic approach, this issue is dissolved. That is, it ceases to be a problem by paradox, okay? Um, if you want to know more about this paradox, uh, you can send me an email. My email is rafael.f.mora arroba hotmail.com in Spanish rafael.f.mora arroba hotmail.com okay um, thank you for your attention